Hi there, glad you're back to learn English from scratch. This is lesson three on the English tenses. This is going to be the most useful lesson of the whole entire course. Rules you can apply every single day. I'm Avantika Singh, I'm a BTEC graduate. This is my GMAT score, which should help you trust me more. An academy courses are free, but you can show your support by contributing. You can also follow me for more lessons on Unacademy at this link. Now, why is this important? I think we already know why tenses are important, because they give the time information of your sentence. Again, we're back to these verb forms. We've seen these before in lesson two, I think. The three forms of verbs. This time, you. You should again say it out loud, just so that when we apply them, you don't have to think too much which form is which. Let's start with the most used form, the most used tense, that's the present tense. The present simple tense tells you about a routine or something that you do daily or even something that you never do. For example, I write stories every day. That's a sentence in present simple tense. In these kinds of sentences, you will see that the verb is being used in the first form. And then you add an S or ES at the end, depending on what the subject is. For example, here I was talking about myself. I write stories every day. If you were talking about somebody else, for example, if you were saying that she writes stories, then you would have add added an S at the end of the verb right. Moving on to the next tense, that's the present continuous tense. This one tells you about an action that has been started, but it is not yet complete. So I am writing stories right now. In this case, you'll add an ing at the end of the first form of verb. And these sentences will usually have is, am, or are. Next on, we have the present perfect tense. This one tells you about an action that was done in the past, and now you're seeing the result of that action. For example, I have written all of the stories. So that means the stories are now ready, because I have already written them in the past, and the result is that the stories are now ready. Then you have the present perfect continuous tense. This tense is actually just a combination of these two. So if you'll see the format and you'll compare it with these two, you'll see uh, that the first form of verb and the ing part comes from the present continuous tense. And you're borrowing the has or have format from the present perfect tense. An example of this tense would be the sentence, I have been writing stories for two hours. Generally, uh, you'll also give a duration in the perfect continuous tense. So the action has started in the past and it is still happening, it is still continuing. That's why it's called the present perfect continuous tense. Next, we have the past simple tense, something that you just did before, that you did in the past. The action has now been finished. That's your past simple tense. In this tense, you'll always use the second form of verb. I ate pizza yesterday. So whenever you're talking about the past, you will use the second form of verb. Now, if you're talking about an action which is still, which was incomplete in the past and was interrupted by another action, then you'll be talking about the past continuous tense. For example, I was eating pizza when you arrived. So I was still eating. I had not completely finished that pizza. I was still eating pizza when you arrived. So when you want to uh, tell somebody about an incomplete action which was uh, interrupted in the past by another action, you'll use this format of the past continuous tense. You'll use was or were and add the verb and at the end, you'll use ing to show that the action was still happening. Then uh, we have the past perfect tense. In this tense, we'll use the third form of verb. I had eaten all of the pizza when you arrived. Again, we have two actions happening. The first one was completed, 
when the when it was inter when it, the second action happened sorry so i had eaten all of the pizza when you arrived i had already finished the pizza so my first action had already been completed that's the past perfect tense now again we'll combine these two into the past perfect continuous tense i had been eating pizza for 2 hours when you arrived the first action was completed when the second action happened i had been eating pizza for 2 hours when you arrived then we use the future future simple tense to talk about actions that are going to be performed that have not yet occurred but will will happen in the future in this case you'll add a will or shall to the sentence and then you'll use the first form of verb for example i will go there tomorrow the future continuous tense in this case you're talking about an action and you're talking about another action so you're again talking about two actions that are going to happen in the future and the first action will be interrupted by the second one for example i will be going there when you arrive moving on to the future perfect tense now the future perfect and the future perfect continuous tense are hardly used by anyone and usually uh, you don't even have to pay attention to these because they are hardly used and um, unless of course you are in an english grammar class but you still need to know how to say the sentences correctly in case you do need to use them so i will have gone there by the time you arrive the action will be completed before the other action happens i will have gone that means i will not be here when you arrive because i will have already left the future perfect continuous tense has the form will have been plus the first form of verb and then you add an ing because it's the continuous tense so the future action will be continuing and then you add a duration you generally do add a duration and then there's the second action i will have been gone for 2 hours when you arrive now here's just a summary of all the formats for the tenses just go through it once and try to apply these rules every time you're speaking to somebody in english that's how you're going to improve your communication skills just by practicing and by remembering what's the right uh, way to speak and what's the right format to use that's it for this lesson i'll see you in the next one bye